Hello and welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussions Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. You must be a witch, because I am living in hell. <laughs> oh man, not sure what to say, but the, the giggles that I'm having right now, uh, no man, I think I'm first. Oh, so joining us today is Dr. Hodge Song. I'm looking up how to be a witch, because they strike fear in men's hearts. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. I, I think you're one letter off. <laughs> oh, boys. They strike fear into the men's hearts. Uh, also That's just... my story and I'm sticking to it. Yep. Uh, I'm sure Manga is afraid of you. Ooh. Yeah, he is. He's tame. He's the one exception. <laughs> uh, for now. That's when you start waving a doom flag. <laughs> doom! <laughs> also joining us today is the Terra. Hello, man. I'm trying to cast a spell, but every time I try to do something, I just launch a hyper beam. You see, I have a two. I have two blue mountains up. Sorry, I have two islands up, and I'm always casting counter spell. That's why. Oh, so he's got two two big blue mountains. Sure, uh, not mountains, islands. Sorry, islands. Yeah, islands. Are they are they ball are they ball shaped? You know what, Silver? Just because of that, I'll just use two blue energies. There, there's spears in Pokemon's, you know, you know. <laughs> but any, well, just just be sure, be sure to handle them gently. Uh, no, I like it rough. <laughs> oh God! Uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review My Little Witch Academia, season one, episode two. In this episode, Ako is excited when her class finally starts, but learning magic turns out to be boring. It's learning. That's why it's boring. Worse, her classmate makes fun of her for admiring uh, Chariot. Ooh. I just want it known that Norman was the first one to slip. Or did I? Mm. <laughs> yes, you did. Because you called it My Little Witch Academia. Yes. Did I stutter? Are you trying to say that it, that's intentional now? You're trying to <laughs> sabotage the rest of us? <laughs> yes. Really, Norman, your subtle trickery. <laughs> I know. I find it delightful. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> we'll do, boss. So, anywho. <laughs> so, anywho. First impression, Silver, what do you think? You know, th- this episode made me think of this uh, anime as sort of the opposite of Harry Potter. Oh? And I don't just mean because it's a predominantly female cast. This episode, which is really settling Akko into daily life, it highlights her strengths and vulnerabilities very nicely. And also her relationship with Diana. Hmm. So we'll talk about more as we get into the actual episode, but it's enjoyable, it's funny, and uh, it shows Akko at her worst and best. Is there a worst? Well, it may be that the Enchanted Parade showed her at her absolute worst. Oh, okay. So basically I've seen the worst, so maybe I'm nullified by it? Okay. okay. Bring it up when we cross that bridge. Okay. Okay. All right. So anywho, uh, Sappy, what about you? I'm not going to lie. I don't remember much outside the ending scene from this episode. <laughs> Says the person I've seen this one. I've seen good things. I've seen it. <laughs> but overall, what do you think? Like, like it? Um, I like the ending. Like, I, I enjoy Diana as a character, especially like later on in the series. But yeah, this kind of like cements her as like the alpha. That's not a word. <laughs> And yes, I know Sweetie Bot's going to get me, but I don't care. Not to mention that's going to be added onto your jar. Yep. I don't even care. She's off. That's not a word. And I embrace it. <laughs> oh, that's true now. Yep. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. I, I, I... <laughs> what? What? That one was anticipatory. <laughs> okay, so that's a freebie. Got it. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, no. It's, that's going to be double charged because now you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Uh, I, I heard a lot of people saying that um, Akko and Diana ship forever. I heard about that. I, w- I wonder if it's going to be... I ship it. Oh, you ship it. So, okay. What about you, Silva? Do you ship those two? Not just yet. Right now, they're they're more fun as rivals. Okay. Oh, yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. But later on, I ship it. <laughs> Silva, have you watched the whole series? Or are you like me, watching it once a while? Like, when we do review, we watch it. I've watched a few episodes, including this one... But uh, I basically, 
I haven't had time to watch anything I, these last couple of okay, weeks. So, because there's been BronyCon, and now that Brony, we're past BronyCon, I'm like, what do I do now? Oh, right, I'm behind on reviews. Ah! Oh, wow. All right, then, all right. Then. At least this show helps you pick the piece up if somebody asks, hey, Silver, what do you think of this episode? Go watch this. It's there. Not really. Go. Still come to mind. <laughs> all right, then. And Tara, what do you think? I really enjoyed it from beginning to end, and I liked how... It- it reminds me, actually, of, from, of um, an episode from My Little Pony into here. Uh, I'll go into that, uh, the ending. But I also liked how the Diana is in this episode as well. And, like, she's not too much of a bully, but, like you said, more of, like, a rival. She be the alpha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting old. So, anywho, as for me, I recently watched this, and I like it. Like, the whole setup, the art style, like... Uh, we get to see the daily life of the students, like what they do or, you know, just the daily life, the normal things, like go to class and whatnot and how class is. And technically class is a bit boring. Uh, we Do we see an episode where they take flying broom lessons? Yes. Oh, yes. that That'll be an important one. Uh, actually, the next episode. Oh, okay, cool. Because I, I'm just wondering if it's something in the OVA or not. Right? Okay, so we. What's do the get... word? Terafila. Terafila. I I forget. What's the spell name? I think it's Tia Frele. Tia Frele. <laughs> Tia Frele. God damn it! <laughs> what? I, I'm I'm feeling like I'm missing something here. <laughs> Oh, you'll get gonna, it next episode. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna count that as your as your your quote unquote freebie, and not double charge. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, so well, yeah, me like this episode. Episode's fun. So, anywho, if you have not watched this episode uh, in, and are interested, pause here and go watch it. I'll come back. I hope you enjoyed the episode because it's time to spoil it. So we start the episode with a flashback with Ako remembering. Her experience launching the shiny arc. And when she wakes shiny up... Shiny rod. No, no, no. When, you know, when she does the arrow thing. Oh, yeah. okay. Flashback. Yeah. That she that she used to take down Doomfist. <laughs> no, no, this one's just opening Later. a portal. You know, like Symmetra uh, opening a portal. <laughs> uh, so opening a portal, the laces are slowly down. Yeah, because they, so they were escaping the dragon, remember? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cockatrice. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. One of those two things. Uh, one of those two things are not like the other. <laughs> so, anywho, Ako wakes up, remembers that, oh, yeah, that wasn't a dream. Oh, I have the shiny rod here. Uh, let me try to spell. Doesn't work. What? What's going on? Does it need a reboot? Have you tried turning it on and off again? This thing has Wi Fi? <laughs> Curse you, Steve, of tech support. <laughs> uh, boys. So, while. Uh, Obey my rod. <laughs> So while Ako is trying to activate her rod, uh, Lotte wakes up and notices that Susie's still there. And Susie's messing around with some poison. And like you guys mentioned a lot, that Susie is just... Best girl. (laughs) Susie's just there to take a sample of poison. Very rare poison that are not available anymore. So anywho, she's doing that and that's why she's staying. And she's a bit sadistic while she tries to concoct some poison to poison a spider? What the heck? Well, it's not that she poisoned the spider. It's more of um, crystallized it. Yeah, I mean, that's scary. But, uh, Norman, she's kind of sadistic? Okay. Kind of? I'll take understatements for a (laughs) hundred. So what is Suchi? Susi. Oh uh, boys, but but anywho, yeah. Uh, okay, she she's she's the opposite of Fluttershy, which is kind of funny she, because well, she I, has Fluttershy hair. I, I think the creator were kind of uh, had inspiration or had inspired from her. But yeah, not twisted. Yeah, much fun. Either way, yeah. she is. She will poison everyone, especially Akko, <laughs> like twenty seven times. Yeah, just keep her away from me because poison's my weakness. She could pretty much uh, look at the whole school and be like, I could kill you all with three drops. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, uh, they get ready for class and they head to school with lessons. And Ako is very 
excited about this because first time at school and whatnot. And yay, let's try and be exciting. Yay, much fun to be had in school. Remember when you were first in school? Were you excited? Oh. I was never excited. Actually, for yes. What really? I I would be like excited every year for school, but then I'd like remember. Oh right, I hate this place. <laughs> what about you, Silva? Uh, what? I was okay with school at the start. It became a drag, of course. Oh yeah, true that. True that. Always does. But anywho, before school starts officially, the teacher has a meeting, and yeah, just telling. Stuff about stuff. I didn't really pay attention. So Ursula nods off because she's tired because reasons. So after meeting's done, she walks off with Miss Nudie Pants, and Ursula just says that she's thinking about giving Akko some extra attention because she's not from the school and she doesn't have a witch's background, so she's kind of lagging behind, and she's she wants to kind of support. Akko in her studies and whatnot. But it seems that Ursula here is a klutz like Akko. So yeah. She might be she sees a lot of herself in Akko and therefore she wants to help. She wants to aid this poor pitiable creature. Oh, I'm not gonna spoil anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already know. <laughs> I already know too. <laughs> what do you what do you I, know? I don't know anything. Don't spoil it for me. <laughs> Well, well, Silver, Torterra, you can go my uh, DM and like tell me what you know, just so we're all on the same page. Oh. All right, all I right. will <laughs> message you right now. Same here. So why why, you, why right you guys do that? I'm just going to continue. So Akko and yeah. uh, Lotte and Suchi goes to class, and they go to their first class. I don't know. The class wasn't clear. Something about code words and whatnot. And Diana easily dice, uh, ciphers, deciphers the um, wording and she's the first one in class and Miss Snooty Pants is really excited and really proud of her. Like, oh wow, she can do this and whatnot. Then later on, we see a class about potion mixing and Susie is really excited and she sniffs it all in. Oh my goodness, she's a maniac. And the third class, I got no idea... Uh, Prediction and premonition, was it? That or how to baloney people in five easy steps. <laughs> uh, is there a difference? Well, one is genuine, one is a con job, and we see more of the latter. <laughs> uh, all right. But anywho... I've concluded that we are not on the complete same page. You're halfway there, but not not yet. All right, then. All right, then. So, anywho, as the teacher reads from the page and whatnot... Uh, Diana corrects her by saying, you're wrong, you, you, you got it wrong. It's from 1 to 4, I don't know, it's something like that. So the teacher notices, oh wow, you're smarter than me. I'm reading from a book. What? No one want to pick that up? All right, then, no problem. Reading from a, well, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm trying to message Safi, who apparently <laughs> is just del- delighting in her knowledge. I am, because I'm never smarter than anyone. But this time, oh boy. <laughs> you'll you'll see why that is, you know, more important later on down the line. All right, then. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But uh, you're reading from a book, and I uh, and what Diana is just saying, I can do it by th- my thought. By I can crush you with the power of my mind. <laughs> kind of. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's Miss Duty Pants. She remembers everything she reads. That's got to be problematic. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, wait. What, what if she learns the greatest magic spell? Mind crush. Oh, God, no. Uh-oh. Then green. Mind crush, Yugi. <laughs> hey, Torterra. Yes? Mind crush. Why? Why not? Oh, boy. What did I do to deserve the mind crush? I'm not evil. I just thought it would be super effective. <laughs> Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. So, anywho. Just uh, like your great balls, you're going to need better ones than that. <laughs> Stop. Oh, my. Joke. No. Mm. <laughs> so, anyway, after class, they have recess or lunch break. I don't know what you call. So, there, there's something fascinating here. The lunch lady or the lunch goblins, whatever they call, they, they're, they're there. They're 
helping around. Like they're the uh, janitor, the, the lunch lady, and I'm also thinking they're the gardener and so on. So yeah, that, that's something interesting. When, after they were conquered in the Great Dark War of 1882. <laughs> Who knows? So anywho. They were destroyed and brought to heal. Point. Yes. So, anywho, uh, during lunch, Akko just okay. I have to backtrack a bit because something strange happened. Uh, while Akko sleeping in class, uh, Susie just put some poison, and she has a plant on her head now. Yep, that's the thing. Anywho, during lunch, Akko resents that class is boring. She thought she it'd be more exciting and whatnot. And how does Silver Chariot? Um, does her classes and whatnot. I mean, isn't it magic to be exciting? Like, look at Trixie. She has excitement and whatnot. Diana comes along and just says, nobody really appreciates or likes Trixie. She's a con. And it's frowned upon in Luna... What now? Luna... Luna Nova. Luna Nova. Yeah, Luna Nova. To say her name. Uh, she hasn't been seen in 10 years. She's gone. A mystery. Nobody knows what she's doing now. Probably she's... In her dungeon or something like that. Or yeah. probably in some live stream doing some stuff on Twitch. Okay, Torterra and I bleh, Torterra and I are on the same page on the whole Ursula giving uh, Akko extra attention. Oh okay, my. got it. <laughs> we're, we're on the same page. <laughs> it took yeah. a while to get to it. It's like, wait a minute. Do you do you actually know why? Anywho, yes, like, anywho. Let's like, continue yeah, on, ladies okay, and gents. Cool. <laughs> so anywho, as this is all happening, um, Ursula just looks down and oh wow, she she's really depressed. I wonder why. Hmm, I wonder why. <clears throat> Diana says nobody uh, likes her or appreciates her and nobody cares. And Akko stands up and says, "I appreciate and care about her because of her. I am into magic, and I shall prove you wrong because I have the silver." What was it again? The shiny rod. Yes, I have a I shiny, say, shiny rod. I... Now obey my rod. Yeah. If you're going to call it the silver rod, that'd be pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. With, oh my. Like, his blue pokeballs. Yeah, why not, right? Hmm. Hey, he said it, not me. So, anywho, uh, Akko brings out the rod and shows it to Diana. And Diana says, oh, that's a cheap knockoff. See here, there's a sign that says made in China. <laughs> but Akko proves her wrong by trying to cast a spell, trying to make the... Statue move. She swings her rod around in public and nobody really gives a crap. Or, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Which is surprising. Why? It's not. Which, which is surprising? Ha 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 ha. so funny. Nah. It, it's surprising because she's waving her rod around and nobody's arresting her for, her for <laughs> public indecency. Seppi! Oh my, oh my goodness! <laughs> Never thought Sa- <laughs> Sapphire would say something like that. They're too busy trying to get that guy who's got the awesome midriff and is waving his rod around. <laughs> uh, what? I command you to check out my awesome abs. Also, you you two clearly don't know me if you don't know that I wouldn't pull that. Oh, no. I, I, I I'm would just... pull that. I may not be on the same page if my little witch... Oh, dang it, I did. <laughs> <Thank> you, <Norman>. <laughs> little <laughs> witch academia. Yes, I might not be on the same page as Little Witch Academia with Safi, but in terms of uh, questionable humor, she and I are, wrote the book. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Although Torterra and I still get to laugh at you for not knowing just yet. <laughs> Let us point and laugh. <laughs> now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh-oh. <laughs> Take cover! <laughs> okay, anywho. Oh, wow. Um, where was it? Oh, yeah, Akko. Akko's waving her rod around and nothing seems to be happening. <laughs> yeah. D- did she try working the shaft? <laughs> she did. Nothing's coming out. Did she out. whip it out hard enough? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think she did. Nothing's coming out. Yes, Maybe God, the shiny God. rod needs a little polish. <laughs> Yeah, anywho, we hear incantations being cast, and suddenly the statue is moving, and oh, it seems Diana's 
did some magic and move the statue. And she berates Akko and whatnot. And Akko seems to be in shock. And Diana walks away. Uh, yeah. Let's just say that. Like a boss. She, she's not having any of it. Though this is where, uh, when I say this is the opposite of Harry Potter, mm-hmm. I, this this is where it really comes in. Well, you think of Harry Potter, magical school, kind of an outcast at first, but Harry always eventually succeeds. Akko, ag- against her rival, always comes up short. And she's much less composed and, well, not always as successful as Harry. So while I can... T- I think when you're watching this anime, there's a great temptation to compare it to Harry Potter. Because, you know, magical school, which looks like a castle, uh, all and, you know, all these different characters. But there's a very substantial difference in how the main character is presented. Namely, she doesn't really have anything going for her, not even reputation. The biggest endorsement is that she's inherited the shiny rod. And even then, it's as if she's failing to live up to it. Uh, another, sorry, um, what you call this? A commenter on the YouTubes mentioned that the show is also similar to a live action uh, series called The Terrible Witch, if I remember right. I think what Blue Dragon highlighted that for me, and it's on Netflix, by the way. And he says that it's some, it's worth a watch. It's something similar to Little Witch, except if Little Witch was a live action show. Uh-huh. Now, I will also say that for uh, Diana, one annoying aspect is her fangirls. Who here saw Gundam Wing and knows about Relina at Peacecraft? I don't. I, I seen Gundam Wing, but I don't really remember much of it because I just remember the robots. Yeah, I don't quite remember it that well either. Yeah, I, I can just imagine. I can just imagine that they're annoying. I he just gasped. don't. I just don't like mecha anime. I'm sorry, Silver. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> Well, here, here's the short version. Relina had an entourage of other students who basically existed in the show just to talk about how great Relina oh, is. Oh, those people or characters, I remember some of it because I remember the main character wanting to kill her. And half the audience, too. <laughs> so I see a lot of that not only with Diane, Diana's entourage of, uh, you know, toadies, but, but even the teachers. After a while, it's like, stop talking about how great she is. It's getting you're you're overplaying. Yep. It. You're becoming a bit redundant. Indeed. Anyway, people don't remember Gundam Wing. Why do you remember the, to? the robots? Plus I don't really Oh you remember the robots. Really... Hey. Oh look at me. I remember a robot. Hey, at least we watch Star Wars, right? It's true. I, well I'm looking at one person though that probably hasn't I've seen bits and pieces. I remember having the tape of uh the one episode, I think it was Return of the Jedi and seeing uh, Leia with Jabba the Hutt. That's the most I remember from Star Wars. Yeah, that's the most some people remember. But come, Torterra, let us point and laugh. But anywho, eh. <laughs> but anywho, after all that's happened, um, Ursula's just watching and Miss Snooty Pants talked to Ursula and asked, have you gotten to do the thing that I asked you to do? And Rosta says, uh, I'm on it now. I'm on it now. So we join Akko and yeah, we join Akko and her friends as they compare magic cards. Yeah, she has a collection of shiny chariot cards where they're like collectors. They're, they're, they're well, they're collectibles. You, you collect them and there's a rarity that Akko is trying to find but couldn't. It's, like it's one of those cards where she's is almost impossible to get. Right? What, I, it's first edition holographic Charizard levels of rare. Yeah, I think what it's called Believing Heart is Your Magic. Yeah, that's the card she's looking for, but I couldn't get. All I know is uh Do you have the shiny Mokuma? <laughs> oh god. Uh but anywho. Well, actually, uh, this is now the part I want to jump in, where it kind of reminds me of the My Little Pony episode, testing one, two, three. Oh, really? Where when, yeah, 
It reminds me because when in the Milo Pony episode, you know that Twilight tries to teach Rainbow Dash the history of the Wonderbolts, but her way doesn't exactly work. Pretty much any way doesn't work except Rainbow Dash's way. Mm. Well, it kind of reminds me of this episode because Diana talks to Akko saying you need to learn magic off of studying books and stuff like that. But while they're going over the cards, like when um, Susie or Lote are holding up a card, Akko reads the whole description of the card and basically it's all like about magic too. So in a way... Diana studies magic through books, while Akko kind of knows about magic through cards. That is true. That is fascinating. I'm giving you a clap, Terra. Oh, thank you. It, it feels well like every college student ever, it's like you, you pay thousands of dollars for this book that you'll never use in your life. Akko is every college student ever. <laughs> uh, but you know what? The magic person in me is noticing a lot of things because... Uh, if you take a look, see at one of the screenshots or one of the pictures or one of the cards, there's a unicorn. Uh, it has three sun symbol and it's a two tree. So in my mind, oh, it's three white and it's a power of two with a toughness of three. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be like a reference to me. It's like what? Am I in the show and I didn't even know it? No. Oh no. Uh, I'm just. Oh, seeing, no. I'm, uh, I'm just. Nerd. Magic the Gathering's ruining me. You uh. big nerd. <laughs> oh. Nerd. You're right there, so Nerd. <laughs> but anywho. <clears throat> well, at Sorry? least you guys got an appearance. Silver has his has his appearance in Harry Potter. Safi has her appearance as a unicorn in Little Witch Academia. I didn't get any appearance in a witch school. There's a big tree. Yeah, kind of. Before. You might be underneath it there, Torterra. Yeah. And it's right in this episode. And it's a magical tree. Talking about magical trees with faces, um, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Because the headmistress is there and is looking at the tree. And the tree is like almost dying and whatnot. Uh, Miss Nudie Pants here just asks uh, Professor Ursula what's going on. And Professor Sla just says that, oh, the tree is... Something is affecting the tree to make it die or something like that. So I'll, I'll just do more research and see what's going on with that. And while that's happening, um, Diana's there looking at the tree, wondering, what could I do? So she puts some rocks around it and, with a bright idea, casts a rejuvenation spell to make the tree rejuvenate. Oh, wow. It works, but somehow it's overgrowing because there's some insects on the tree. Some kind of, what you call this, parasite. Oh no. So while that's happening, Akko and her friends are playing Magic the Goodering. And while playing, the roots of the tree kind of overgrows and destroys their game. Oh no. That's right. You can, you can be a world-threatening menace, but you do not mess with the magic game. Yeah, man. Like, Damn right, boy. Yeah, those those duels are serious. So, anywho, Akko and her friends goes to the tree and asks what's going on. And they see that uh, Diana's there. She asks, and, well, instead of responding, um, the roots come out and show some kind of uh, parasites. Oh, no, they're there to destroy the tree and destroy them. Diana pulls out her wand and destroys it. Akko noticed something funny about those parasites and stands in front of Diana saying that, no, don't shoot this. There's something up with them. They're, they're not what you think they are. Oh, no. Well, she takes a hit from... So it's like, okay, I'm lording that over you, Biznatch. Yeah. So... Oh, D- Dizam. She's about to throw yeah. down. Straight up gangster, she, she, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Diana uh, takes aim and shoots at another parasite but Akko jumps in the way like a boss and gets hit. And wow, that hit's really taken her out because she has black baby eyes and looks like she's almost dying. And Akko just says that, no, don't shoot those things, man. I think I know what they are. They're the butterfly thingy that I showed, talked to you guys earlier about the cards and whatnot. Believe in the info of the cards. Yeah. Mind crush, Yogi. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Akko believes that these are the butterflies that she mentioned before and the shiny rod shines or illuminates and she 
cast a spell. But Diana, okay, she it's not really a but, but Diana just says, oh, this is how you pronounce the word. And Ako says, huh, is that how you say it? Oh, okay, that's cool. And says it properly and cast the spell. And once that happens, the parasite turns out to be butterflies. Yay. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> naked Yay. butterflies. You said don't wear clothes, so how are they naked? Well, how many insects have breasts? I'm thinking... Every other I'm Yu-Gi-Oh thinking. card. Insects <laughs> princess being one of them. But Sappy, Yu-Gi-Oh cards don't have breasts. It's a big no-no. Oh yeah, they 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 spray brush over them. You know, by this point, I'm just wondering why don't they just put a black bar over them? But uh, you, you're answer the question, Norman. How many magical? How many insects have a female form, complete with breasts? I'm going to go insect on. Princess from Yu-Gi-Oh. What, let's uh, uh, besides Yu-Gi-Oh and likely Magic the Gathering, uh, none. And Van <laughs> and Vanguard and Duel Wait, Masters. Wait, you know Vanguard? And, you know. Oh, there's. <laughs> There's also the uh, bee princess from um, <clears throat> Nefarious, the video game. Okay, Silva, I- I'm giving up on this. Seppi knows a lot more than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's ironically, Seppi knows a lot about insects with breasts. Mm, yeah, I never Watch thought her. I'd see the day, considering I hate insects. Oh. Meanwhile, I imagine her favorite song is I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. <laughs> Nah, my favorite song right now is, well, Devil Trigger from Devil May Cry. Yeah. Five. Point is, I'm just like, are we allowed to show this on TV? Is it on Netflix, right? It's not on TV, it's Netflix. Yep. Are we allowed to show this on Netflix? Yep. Well, they had Tuka and Birdie up until it was canceled, so hey. <laughs> oh, well, the boy. second season was canceled. Oh, boy. Unfortunately. <laughs> Rest in peace. Okay, okay, okay. So, anywho... Uh, butterfly emerge, and while this is happening, I, I think what uh, Professor Ursula is just uh, what's it? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, expositioning to us about what they are and whatnot. It's like, yeah, okay, mm, I think we already know this, Miss Ursula. So let's carry on. So the butterfly spawn and they fly above the sky, and the tree is looking healthier, and Hitmare. <laughs> Norman! Norman! You're sick. What? I don't even know if he's sick, but he's definitely... You're locked in, man. I think we got to hold an intervention. Bayonetta, bayonetta, bayonetta. That's right. we got to get you on a bayonetta kick again I'm, for a good I'm couple months. Bayonetta. Get this pony out of your system. I'm playing bayonetta, by the way. Anyway, um... <clears throat> Oh, that was an honest mistake. Right now? Wow. Norman, fo- focus on the podcast. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I will be awesome if I can do that. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Sorry, where was I again? Yes. The headmistress uh, comes in with Miss Snooty Pants because Hannah and Barbara are there because uh, they wanted to show how awesome Diana is. Once they see, oh, the tree is healthy and whatnot. And Diana saying that, oh, no, this wasn't me. And the headmistress says, I don't see anybody around, so it has to be you. Awesome logic. Yes. Th- this really isn't a good school. No, it's not. Silver, the reason why is it's a magicking school. That's why. Yeah, well, that they should be able to, you know, <coughs> divine the truth through a spell. But they don't. They do not. It takes. Because they are not so <laughs> smart. Uh, it takes time. But they are not ponies, and we are trying to get Norman to accept this. I know it's hard. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> could say that they're very forgetful. <laughs> this is all true. But just just stare into the shiny rod and let it take over your mind. <laughs> I'm going to let that one slip. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> well, I could always back you up, Norman. I could always or, bring up a moment. or you could stare into this bayonetta booty. Or that. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Later. Become booty blind. Later, 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 later. I, I, I'll do that later. Anywho, um, Diana excuses herself and she looks at the sky because the butterflies are still flying up. And we see Ako and her friends flying with the butterflies. Yay! And with that, episode ends. So, anywho, let's head into final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, this is establishing the the status quo for the episode for the series. 
I mean, we had this grand introduction, this magical reveal of this powerful rod, which you will obey. <laughs> and now you get into sort of the doldrums. You get into the nitty gritty of everyday student life. Plus also the strained relation between Akko and Diana. So I think it's a very important episode. I think it's a very good one. When I said that it, it shows Akko at her worst, well, she's full of energy, but not focus. She loves magic, but won't b buckle down to learn it. She has trouble learning because of her flighty nature. So it shows how she uh, is going to be struggling throughout this series. And yet it also shows the ideals that keep her moving and her unlikely role as a hero. Now, now this is going to be uh, ironic that you say flighty nature. When she can't fly? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's such a terrible thing to laugh at, but that was just so ironic. Mm. But I had to point it out. Oh, you're mean. Learning to fly, learning to fly. But I ain't got wings. Well, see, if, if if we did this podcast before Silver had a flight animation, we could have made jokes about that. Well, too bad. You're about four years Wait, too what? late. Wait, what? Has it been four years already since you used us? Since you last used your flight animation? No, that, since I last used it? No, it's when I so first these, used it. Yeah. When you first had a flight animation. Oh, wow. okay. Believe it or not, those four years have flown by very, very yeah, fast for me. Yeah. Same year. Yeah, really. Where did the time go? I used to be 18 and cringy and, oh, and cr a total Silver Quill fangirl. <laughs> Where the hell did that go? <laughs> yeah, same here. I used to be yeah. a crazy Silver Quill fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> I, and now I've lost you both. <laughs> Oh, I uh, well, I I think this is one of the downsides or upsides of hanging out with Silver a lot. <laughs> you lose, you lose any and all respect for him. No, nah, no, nah, it's not that. Uh, we have a great appreciation. I, oh, you for never you. had, you never had it to begin <laughs> with. Uh, no, we have. Nah, it's still there. There's still respect. All right, all right, all right. Getting back on track, Silver. You, you were saying? No, let's let's continue with respecting <laughs> me. I feel like this is a very important topic. <laughs> <laughs> We do, we do, in our own special ways. I'll use up my time instead of talking about the episode, talk about how much I respect Silverquill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This whole episode is now dedicated to us talking about Silver. Later, we do that on yep. a special. And how great he is, and then inflating his ego. <laughs> yes. But uh, with, with this episode, the mystery of what's happening to the tree, it shows that even in a magical world, not everyone has all the answers right away. I think that's a good thing, because let's be honest. In this world of ours, even doctors and scientists have to still run tests, even if they're well familiar with the subject, because there's always the X factor, the unknown, mm -hmm. something that we have to double check if if you're smart. Uh, talking from listening to Stephen Fry again, we live in an age where the where the stupid are certain. Ooh, that's that's not. <laughs> it's the truth. The, the more certain people are, the the more I, I distrust them or I need a little extra proof because have you really thought about it? <laughs> oh, boys. True, true. I, I can see your point. I can see your point. Oh, man. But uh, is there anything else to that, Silver? Oh, that's a good deal oh, right, right there. All right, then. And anywho, uh, Tara, what do you think? Oh, well, like I said, I really enjoyed the episode from the beginning to end and I liked the one moment how it reminds me of that um, MLP episode where everyone has their ways of learning in different ways, like how Diana learns from books and Akko learns from cards. And just like how uh, I guess you could go in this situation where Silver goes into very well detail on My Little Pony. But when it comes to Pokemon, either me or Safi have to jump in and explain to him what this means. <laughs> okay. And Safi, what about you? I, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Well, it, it did like hit the... Uh... You know, parts I didn't really enjoy at the beginning with the, uh, well, you know, the established rivalry. Other than that, like, you know, the whole tension thing, like, that kind of gets to me sometimes. Like, uh... Anyways, other than that, I really enjoyed the episode visually, especially towards the end. Mm, all right, all right. Like, I, I enjoyed the pretty, well, you know. Yeah. Butterflies with boobs. Yeah, d d uh, uh, I... Booby flies. <laughs> huh? They're booby flies. Yeah, they're, 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 they're booby flies. Why yeah. not? Let, let's go booby with that. Booby flies, booby flies, booby, booby, booby oh, flies. Okay, anyway, <laughs> as for me, as for me, uh, this this episode was a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoyed the art. The, the, the art is awesome. And what else can I say? The story is kind of cool, too. I, I do like 
the part where the cards i know i'm a card game nerd and whatnot but still the, the card looks really nice and the way that akos learn stuff like she has the talent there she has raw potential and whatnot but she doesn't know how to activate it yet but still you can clearly tell that okay she, she has it but she doesn't know how to use it and on top of that like Tara mentioned the way that she's learned like okay she, but I'm thinking at the same time too she's been reading those cards for all her life and when you think about it like is that setting her up for the future because it feels like it it feels like uh, whatever she's doing is setting her up for whatever event is going to happen I feel that way and who knows right maybe, maybe it's like that probably Actually, she's setting her up to be a kaiju Pokemon master of the fifth order dual disc queen of games. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And then don't, don't forget, uh, she also has key runes and stuff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But overall, I like this episode. The art's awesome. The art's really awesome. So, anywho, um, with that, those are our thoughts. Anything to add besides what we already said? No. No? Alrighty then. But, but anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's thing? It, a fair question. So since Norman hasn't quite kicked the pony thing, I guess we got to go back there and try to work it out of his Never. system. Because you head mayor and my little witch we sabotage me too. <laughs> that, I am proud of that. Uh, well, you know what? This antagonistic relationship is fitting because we are going to talk about a rather high point of the season in my eyes. Mm. Frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> Finally! Ah, yes! I am so happy! Oh, this episode's gonna be fun! Kinda reminds me of me and you at BonyCon with frenemies because you were tossing your great balls at me. <laughs> Does this yes, mean so you... I'm Chrysalis? Can I be Chrysalis? Oh, no, you're the youngest. Dibs on. Dibs no, on Tyrion. No, no. Let, let's make. Let's make Torterra Cozy Glow since he's the newest person in our podcast. <laughs> You want to be friends? <laughs> See, and he's a lot nicer than me. Yeah, I, I, and creepier yeah, sounding. I guess he accepted yeah. his feet then. All right. Yay! Whoa, if that's the case, I'll be Gogar. <laughs> <Yay> for, <laughs> I mean, Norman is for fatalism. <laughs> yeah, so next. And we all work to undermine him. <laughs> I wish you don't. I wish you don't, but... Mm-hmm. So, anywho, next week we are going to review Season 9, Episode 8, Frenemies. Yes, there's going to be a lot of fun. Whoop, boys. <sighs> Yay! I'm so yeah. happy. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good, gentle witches and warlords find you? At the nearest bonfire, because I burned the witch. <laughs> Burn the witch. Uh, you can find me on Twitter under NLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same, where there's a Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight every Friday before a new episode. Uh, you can find me on YouTube just to search for a Silver Quill and after the fact. You can also find me on Patreon under Silver Quill. Please <laughs> help a brother out. And every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, you'll find an, either a comic review or editorial by a yours truly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check him out, guys. And also, Seppi, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, and other forms of social media under the name Anne May Christie. Also, you can donate three bucks to me through Kofi if you really, really want to make sure that I don't, well, starve myself to death. Please, please don't let me starve. Okay, okay. Do, go help her with some morning coffee. Yeah. And... Plus, I'm I'm actually taking classes that are starting at like 7.45 in the morning and I'm going to need it. Wow, they start that early? Well, the, the things you do for painting. Oh, wow. It feels like nobody's... No pain, no gain. <laughs> Anyways, Tortera, where can the good people find you? <laughs> I thought that was Norman's line. Yeah, I, I'm, I, well, too bad. <laughs> I just stole it. Now, see? They're undermining well, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, Sapphire Heart Song, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they can just simply do a Google search, and I'll be on all of those. Or the good people can also donate to me on Patreon, because I'm not horse famous like a certain someone, so, you know, don't don't donate to them. Donate to me, please. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> Torterra, that's a party <laughs> fellow right there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, don't do that. Should we should we do a comparison on how much no, you don't have do on that. Patreon compared to no, me? No, <laughs> don't do that. Com- comparison is the thief yeah, of joy. I mean, yeah, we don't need to compare. We don't need to measure. <laughs> Plus, if you if you don't shut a your face, I break a your face. No oh, god. <laughs> don't make me get the master balls again. You don't have any master balls. They're only great balls. Oh, believe me. If you th- if you try to threaten me, we'll see who's master. <laughs> Hold your tongue, hold your tongue. I feel like there's a shipping joke somewhere in here. Uh, or a yaoi joke. Oh. oh, come on. We're just we're just trying to be a pair of ballers. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that to the- Norman, because he feels like he's probably going to have a mental breakdown after this. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, Norman, do you do you need a little wee-oo in your life? <laughs> uh, I blame you. Man, we're just on the ball Please today, aren't we? give me huggy wuggies. <laughs> Uh, boys. So anyway, um, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PolyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Starstream, Master Flag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill. I am a Safi. And I am Torterra. Anyway, we'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. Booby flies, booby flies, booby, booby, booby flies. Uh, adios. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh. I was distracted by balls. Sorry about that. Love balls. Apparently, song and dance is all you guys need to drive you to silence. (laughs) I'll have to remember this. Oh, God. (laughs)